I want to take a little time and review pronouns with you today. Some of you struggled with your homework over pronouns last week. Because of the struggle, I'm requiring that everyone view this PowerPoint, take notes, go back and review your sections in your writer's reference handbook, and then redo your pronoun homework. Your pronoun homework is now due this Saturday. Okay, let's do a review. What is a pronoun? It's a word used in place of a noun. It usually substitutes for a specific noun known as the antecedent. Here's an example. When the battery wears down, we recharge it. It is the pronoun taking the place of the antecedent battery. You could just as well say, when the battery wears down, we recharge the battery. They both mean the same thing. Pronouns are sometimes used as adjectives. In this case, that bird was at the same window yesterday morning. That is a pronoun functioning as an adjective telling us specifically which bird. There are personal pronouns. In the singular form, we have I, me, you, she, her, he, him, it. In the plural form, we have we, us, you, they, and them. Notice you is both singular and plural. The Ar Arkansas way of saying the plural form of you is y'all. Some of you know what I mean by that. However, y'all is considered slang and is not acceptable in formal English writing. There are possessive pronouns. Possessive just simply shows ownership. This belongs to me. The singular possessive pronouns are my, mine, your, yours, her, hers, his, and its. And that is I-T-S without an apostrophe. And you would be surprised at the students and even people in general who get that confused. The plural form is our, ours, your, yours, their, theirs. Some of the possessives also function as adjectives such as my, your, his, her, its, our, and their. And then we have the intensive and reflexive pronouns. The purpose of the intensive and reflexive pronouns being used in a sentence is to merely stress or accentuate the significance of a person doing something or being present. Uh, for example, if we said, the senator himself came to our meeting when we use the pronoun herself alongside the noun senator, we're accentuating the point that the senator considered this meeting with us so important and significant that he himself came to meet with us as opposed to sending a representative from his office. So let's look at the singular reflexive pronouns. This would have to do with anything referring to self or in the plural form, selves. The singular would be myself, yourself, himself, herself, its self. The plural would be ourselves, yourselves, themselves. If you have any questions about the intensive or the reflexive or anything else, of course, uh, call me at my office or email me. The relative pronouns, okay, these are your relatives. Who, whom, whose, which, and that. 
Also, there are other words, other forms of those words that are used, and these forms typically introduce a noun clause, and these relatives that typically introduce a noun clause are whichever, whoever, whomever, what, and whatever. And if you'll notice, basically what, that, what we've done with these is almost all of these, we've just added the word ever to it. But these relatives are typically used to introduce noun clauses. And I do have an example sentence later that we'll discuss that has a noun clause, a relative noun clause in it. There are interrogative pronouns, and these, of course, introduce questions. Who, whom, who's which, and what. Demonstrative pronouns identify or point out specific nouns. They frequently function as adjectives, and these demonstratives are this, that, these, and those. Whose notebook is lying on the floor? That belongs to me. It's pointing out a specific uh, noun. There are indefinite pronouns. Now, this is where the majority of you on your homework last week got confused. Most indefinite pronouns are always singular, and they refer to non-specific persons, hence the term indefinite. Everyone and each are always singular. If you attach the word one to the word each mentally, that will help you to remember anytime you're referring to each, you're referring to only one specifically at a time. Some of these indefinite pronouns are always plural, and it's, it's almost a given. The word both means two, and many means, of course, more than two. So those two are always plural. A few are either singular or plural, depending on how they're used in the sentence. You will need to go back and review the list on page 200 for yourself to, and, and look at the notes to see when they are used singularly and when they are used plurally. Always remember this. In formal writing English settings, formal writing English settings, treat these words as though they are singular. When you are doing written assignments, treat those words as though they are singular. That information is found on page 201. Let's look at a sample sentence. Everyone on the team supports the coach. Supports is in the singular form, singular verb form. Everyone is always used as a singular pronoun, therefore everyone supports. Every one single person supports. Okay, And sometimes in your mind, mentally, you'll need to attach a few extra words to help you get it straight. If it says every one, even though the word every might give you an indication that there are several choices or several people involved, the word one is your key here. It is singular. Now, let's look at the next sentence. Each of the essays have or has been graded. You decide. Nobody who participated in the clinical trials were or was given a placebo. You decide. Everyone on the team supports the coach. We've already talked about that. Each of the essays, I, I apologize, the S is missing on essays. Please put it there mentally. Each of the essays has been graded, and you're sitting there saying, essays is plural. Why is has the chosen word? 
If you will put parentheses around the prepositional phrase of the essays and just draw a line through it mentally in your mind as though it's not there and just deal with the subject and the verb each and remember what I told you if you will attach to the word each the word one it will help you one is singular each one has been graded they were graded only one at a time okay so that's how you look at that nobody who participated in the clinical trials was given a placebo now you're saying and trials is plural so you need the plural form however remember a moment ago I told you that we would talk about a noun clause if you would place brackets around who participated in the clinical trials and then pretend as though that part is not there and I hope you're taking notes and as you're taking notes you're writing this down if you place the brackets around who participated in the clinical trials remove that mentally from the sentence and you deal with the subject and the verb only at this point you're left with nobody was and again if you'll think about that word one no one body was given and that will give you the clue that it is singular no one body individually was given okay now again if you have questions because this can be confusing but if you've jotted that down in your notes as I've just instructed that will that should help you as a guide the next time you deal with these but if you do have any questions please email me and let's talk about this or call me okay now we have the reciprocal pronouns these are the pronouns that refer to an individual part of a plural antecedent. Each other and one other are your reciprocals. By turns, the penguins fed one another. You could also say the penguins took turns feeding each other. Okay? Subject verb agreement is extremely important. You must use nominative case pronoun when that pronoun is used as the subject or when that pronoun immediately follows a linking or a be verb. Your nominative case pronouns are he, she, it, we, and they you will use objective case when it is used as the direct object it's the direct object when it follows an action verb or when it is used as the object of the preposition these are your objective case him her them there when to use I and me this is another part of the pronoun homework that many of you were very very confused about uh, when to use I and me as well as the other nominative and objective cases always use nominative case I he she we they when it is used as the subject following a linking verb or if it is uh, or if there is an elliptical sentence after the pronoun what is an elliptical sentence elliptical means part of it is missing okay and we'll talk about that in just a moment always use the objective case me him her us they uh, objective case they that should be them so in your notes, I did this in a, in a fast hurry. 
among other things going on. So please change the word they to them in your notes at this point, and I will change it in my PowerPoint later. But I want to get this out to you before time expires, and I want you to be able to have this while you do your homework. But the objective case, I will repeat this so you can jot this down in your notes. Objective case is me, him, her, us, them, T-H-E-Y, no, T-H-E-M. Always use objective case when it's used as the direct object or it's used as the object of the preposition. Okay, let's look at this conversation. I'm calling for Cheryl Toon. Is she available? My response would be, this is she or this is her. You decide. Who is on the phone? I say. It is he or him, you decide. Have you seen Seth? I saw he or him yesterday. I love running more than he or him, you decide. Okay, now let's talk about these one at a time. I'm calling for Cheryl Toon. Is she available? And I respond by saying, this is she. Is is a linking verb. The pronoun that follows must be in nominative case. Therefore, I should respond by saying, this is she. Who is on the phone? It is he. I know many of you say it is him, but in this case, is, again, is a linking verb. Therefore, you must use the nominative case pronoun, which is he. Have you seen Seth? I saw him yesterday. Saw is an action verb. Therefore, you need objective case, him. Typically, the pronouns ending with M are the objective case. I love running more than he. And here we have the elliptical sentence. And I'll read it to you like this. I love running more than he and the elliptical part is loves running. So if you read it like this, I love running more than he loves running, he would be the subject of the elliptical clause that's missing. Therefore, you have to use the nominative case, he. Now, would it also be correct to say I love running more than him? Yes, you could do that if you're saying I love running more than I love him. And that part of the elliptical. So, what is the elliptical that has been omitted? I love running more than I love him. Or I love running more than he loves running. Well, with this particular sentence, certainly I love running more than he loves running. And I'm referring to my husband in this sentence. He hates running. He will not run with me, but I love running. But I would never say I love running more than I love him because he always does come first. Okay, if you have any questions about that, please email me or call me. You all need to review the text, the PowerPoint. I hope you took notes. If not, replay this, stop it, pause it, take notes. And then I want you to go back and redo your homework. Use your notes as you do your homework. And remember, your homework this time is due this Saturday.